You know what? Steal mine. That one's not. Hello. Oh, now, now it's got both. I think it's really unfair that you just had a contest to take my job. <laughs> Are you taking my job? Oh. All right. Hi, everybody. That was so much fun. I got video of all of y'all. <laughs> Have you seen people do impersonations before? I make people do impressions <laughs> of me all the time. I say, if you say it, I'll say it. Mama <laughs> Yeah. It's only fair, right? You guys did it, so. That's it. Okay. Until you can end now. I'm so happy that that oh, just happened. Stop it. No, I always, you know, like, some people are like, do you mind saying it? I'm like, of course I'll say How rude would that be if I came all the way over here to Scotland and wouldn't say Papa Sorry? That'd be rude. Have you been to Scotland before? No, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me, Scotland. It's off, it's so, um, yeah, I get to spend some extra time, so. I was gonna ask, have you got anything planned to go and visit anywhere? Well, I'm gonna food? go to, I'm gonna do like some day trips, some Glencoe, maybe see some Outlander stuff. <laughs> Cause that's my dorkiness. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna wander the streets of Scotland. You see me out hitchhiking, give me a ride. No, I won't do that. That's bad, children, don't ever do that. Anything back home that you miss? Not yet. No. I don't miss. I don't miss that. I see a Trump uh, cosplayer in the audience, so I might just stay here. We got rid of you earlier. It's come back now. I don't usually get political, but I think that's fair game. So. I think everyone here agrees. It's I think fine. so. I think we're in good company. Um, so I did a bit of stalking. Uh oh. And on Thursday, it was your birthday. It was. So we're all gonna sing happy birthday. I've got a little muffin here. No candles. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tara. Happy birthday to you. Woo! A round of applause. I think we have a little present for you. No, wow. That's for me? That's for you. But that is me. <laughs> oh my god, I have to wear this right now. You guys are the best. I was flying all day on my birthday. And this is like the most birthday I've gotten. Gosh, wait, I'm just gonna hold it This is how people wear it now. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. It was so sweet. Hopefully you can remember us from Scotland. Oh my gosh. Like I wouldn't remember you guys, but I'm gonna make us a little smaller. Gritty. Yes, no, um, oh my gosh, where to be in? I mean, we all love you from Bulbasaur. You don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> but how did, you, how did you get into it? How did it all start? Well, you know, Pokemon was just another, like at the time, it was 20 years ago, so it's hard to remember exactly, but Pokemon was just another audition I went to in a day of talking, just talking at auditions. And I were, the first day I showed up, I was working, I believe it was episode three or four, it was called Bulbasaur in the Hidden Village, and I was there playing Melanie, and they said, hey, there's that little blue guy in the episode, we're gonna try you out on, you wanna try that voice? I was like, all right. They're like, I'm like, what does he say? And they said, he says Bulbasaur. And I said, what else does he say? And they said, nothing. And I said, this is a weird show that is never going anywhere. And that was 20 years ago. So they played me the, oh, it's Ash Ketchum. Um, they played me the original Japanese, uh, Fushiga Dane. But he says, Dane, Dane, Dane. And they said, just uh, sound like that and say Bulbasaur. So it's up to you. you, you created the style. Well, I could have lost the job. I mean, we really, we did model it after the original Japanese voice. So, which is nice. You kind of have a guide track to go by and you want to remain, um, you want to, you want to honor the original too. I know some people like to make it their own. I, I think there's a beauty in, in kind of having this guide track and the original writers and directors in the room. So I do try to, as much as I can be, be kind of faithful to the original. Do you have any other Pokemon in the room with you? Is like you and Pikachu having a conversation? I'm so, oh, what? <laughs> do you and Pikachu have a conversation in the booth or do you tend to record on your own? We record all by ourselves. And, and actually, Pikachu was the one voice they kept from Japan. So that, we never got to do that, but you know, then we would be in the booth, they'd say, okay, uh, try Oddish now. And so then you'd be having a conversation with yourself 
So it'd be like, ba 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 sir. Anish, I don't know Anish. Very quick. And you would just be having, it was so weird. Um, and again, you know, remember 20 years ago, we didn't have, we, we weren't YouTubing these shows. And all I knew about Pokemon was that it was a cartoon in Japan that gave kids seizures. Right? That's, isn't that all we knew at the beginning was that kids got seizures from the strobe lights. I haven't seen that episode. I should probably, I don't want to have a seizure. <laughs> I feel like I'd be very susceptible. So, so yeah, I mean, we really had no clue what we were getting into. When did it first hit you that he's like, oh wow, this is actually such a phenomenon? There's, so the, when the first movie, Pokemon 2000, came out before a lot of you were born. Okay. Um, we had the premiere at a, a very famous movie theater in New York called the Ziegfeld. And we, there was like a red carpet and, you know, we were, and I think we all looked at each other and thought, oh my, oh my God. Like, because we, you know, when you do voiceovers, especially you're, you're in a little bubble, you're working in a booth. I knew that like my cousin, my little cousins liked the show, but we didn't have Twitter. We didn't, we didn't know that there were hardcore fans. Social media wasn't really a, Oh my gosh, can you imagine if it had been then? But yeah, so it was so much fun to, and that's why I love coming to these things around the world, to meet you guys and, and see like the reach of Pokemon and, and the lessons that when you guys watched it as kids, the lessons you took away from it and the friendship, the friendships you built around it and because of it, it's really, very lucky. Is that one of your favorite things at conventions is seeing people and how they, uh, what's your most fun, like, fun moment from a convention? I, I love the moment when I do the voice and, and if someone's being very shy or quiet or a kid is just kind of like eh, and then I do the voice and, the, and their guard drops because of, you know, it's not, I can't take credit for it, but it's because, I mean, it's, first of all, it's the character design of this little guy. It's the original Japanese people who put this crazy voice with it. It's, there's something that all of a sudden people relax because of, and then they're able to have a conversation, and they're, and it's it's lovely. It breaks down this wall that I that otherwise we might not be able to get past. That's a really lovely thing because yeah, sometimes it's a way of communicating without having to you know right. talk to someone. Well, I always say because the car because the Pokemon didn't talk. Kids are able, to, and adults who watch it, are able to decide what they're saying. And it's great for the imagination. I used to think it was odd that they didn't talk. And now I realize, oh my gosh, you guys got to make up the whole conversation in your head, which is so much better. What did you think? So the, the new movie, they actually spoke. What are your thoughts about that? I haven't seen it. I'm nervous. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so full disclosure, I work on Digimon now. And they speak. I know, I work on Digimon Adventure Try and they speak. So I got a little taste of it from that, but it's, it's weird. I mean, and it's weird even in the games when they only make noises. Cause I'm like, no, oh, yeah, that, Eevee says Eevee. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> but I understand why. So you mentioned Digimon. Uh, are you working Sorry. on anything else that you can tell us about? Okay, what am I allowed to talk about? Um, well, recently I've been working on a show called Saint Seiya that's on Netflix and um, Hunt, yeah, right? Finally got dubbed uh, Hunter Hunter, which I know you guys don't have Toonami here, which is such a shame, but you have Crunchyroll. I like that I have like an information person right here. I love it. You had Toonami and they took it away? That's very important. Uh, so we have Crunchyroll, so yes, yeah, things like Twin Star Exorcist, yeah, I just We're all gonna go on Twitter now and like where you all point your finger around. Say whatever they tell me to say. Yeah. Actually, I saw on Twitter you had like animal face masks. I know. I'm Is so this like stupid. a thing now? What was the one you posted, Brad? I, I didn't even know what animal that was. I was trying to work it out. That was supposed to be a cat. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in hotel rooms. It's you know what? I'm not gonna bore you. You with have this. to follow her Twitter page because it's I'm really so funny. Stupid. <laughs> no, I'm so silly. Yeah. Next convention, you have to bring one for me. For everybody, we'll yeah. yeah. Well, for everyone, we we'll all just... Part, you know what, everyone just come to my hotel room tonight. <laughs> yeah? Okay. I invite. Awesome, that's not weird at all. Yeah, okay. What's your next convention? What? Where are you going next? Oh gosh, 
Well, I get to go home for a whole month. I live in Los Angeles. Come visit. You, can, you either come to my hotel or just come visit me in LA. Um, and then I want in Virginia. But I love these where I get to go to places I've never been. I mean, this is way more, nothing against Virginia, but this is way more special. Yeah. Have, so uh, back to sorry, yeah, let's your talk <laughs> to you. Um, have you ever wanted to do something else, maybe like behind the scenes more or in front of the camera? I do, I do on camera. I actually used to do what you do. I used to be a host on Cartoon Network, uh, and I got to interview people, and I, that was probably my. Fa I've I've done other roles on camera, but that was my favorite job was doing interviews. I love what you do. I think that's super See, I'm awesome. quite new and I'm still so nervous about it all. Well, but it, you, know you get to meet so many amazing people. We're going to do a Freaky Friday one day where we switch lives. Yeah. I can sit there with a the hat on now. Should we do oh, it? <laughs> no, I just want to... Like, that's my problem is talk... I don't... I don't really like talking about myself. I want to start asking questions and I have to reel it in. Okay, I'm going to take the pressure off me now. Yeah. Have you got any audience questions? They're very like shy, Scotland. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah, you must have a question. You, you know everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, I put him on the spot. Well, what is your favorite line that Sonia says in Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia? Valentia. Oh, Sonia in Fire Emblem. What is my favorite line that she speaks? Well, it's not a line really. It's just that I got to use a voice that I don't normally get to use. She sounds more like this, which is very different from the, the voice that all of us have. So it was really the whole thing, just being allowed to talk like a grown-up in a sultry voice like that. That was such a treat. I was like, thank you for letting me do that. I mean, I auditioned for it, but a lot of people, when they decide that you do little kid voices or creatures, or they don't let you do anything else. So just as Sonia was amazing. Do you have a favorite line? I feel ravishing today. I feel ravishing today. Oh, that's a good, that is a good, I'm gonna steal that from you. That's a good one. I feel ravishing today. Right, so yeah, obnoxious, hands, isn't it? Hands up really high so I can see. Yes. Um, was it fun to come back as Mokuba in the UVM movie? So her question was, was it fun to come back as Mokuba? Yes, I, I've never left a character for like 15 years, or maybe less, it was probably less, and come back to play it. So we did a movie called The Dark Side of Dimensions, and a lot of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! cast got to come back, and it was like, it was like being with a, a long-lost friend. You know, even Darren Dunstan was directing it, and again, it's another friend I haven't seen in years because I moved from New York to Los Angeles. Um, so just being even in the booth, having that voice in my head, just, it was so exciting. And, you know, the crazy thing is, he seems to have aged more than anyone in that movie. So I was very nervous. So I've talked about, I feel like I've talked about my face when I'm cooking. Um, I was very nervous I wouldn't get to do it. But it, he just, Mokuba like very quickly went through puberty and put on a suit because it's only really six months later. So it wasn't like he turned 18. He was still a kid. I just pitched his voice down a little bit. Um, also, what was fun in that movie, see, in the, in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, I don't know if you guys watched it, but the only thing Mokuba ever said was, help, help, big brother, help. He didn't say help once in that movie, which was crazy. So that was kind of fun. I'm like, oh, he grew up. I hope we get to do another one. Fingers crossed. Come to the side. Camera's freaking Because I don't know what it looked like in this camera. Uh, uh, when you did, what was it like doing all the shows when Fox, the uh, kind of Fox was trying? Four kids had that rock and uh, Fox. Oh. Fox kids, sorry. sorry. What was it like doing all the shows that uh, Four kids had during the so the question was what was it like working for four kids when they had all those different fox shows it was like it was like an anime factory at that point which is like everyone's dream you know you would we'd show up for work and go from like room to room to room and just get to talk funny and it was the greatest i, I think that was probably my favorite couple of years of my career because 
on any given day, I would go from playing a bunch of Pokemon to going to like Kirby, to Shaman King, to, I mean, just, and the amount of talent just on that floor, it, it was a, this big building in Chelsea in New York, and just the amount of talent there and the amount of creativity going on, and oh God, we did Ninja Turtles, there was so much stuff going on, it was, it was so, it was, it was the best. It was the, it was everything an actor could ask for. And I feel like now it's not as, now they're casting wider nets to cast roles. But back then they'd be like, oh, you're here. Uh, can you do this while you're here? And it wasn't, there was no IMDB. So people didn't realize, you know, we didn't even keep track of all the roles we did in that, at that time. We didn't know that 20 years later we'd be talking about it. <laughs> So people say, did you play this role? I, you probably remember the four kids one piece that everyone hated. Yeah, I didn't know everyone hated it because there was no Twitter. Um, I found that out at conventions. Um, but there's, there's roles, they said, did you play this? I'm like, you have to, I have to hear it. I have no, and then they played it for me. I'm like, I still don't know if that was me. I don't think so. So it was just a different time to be working in anime and it was, it was awesome. It was, that's a good question. Yeah, it was a really cool time. Next question over here. I thought, oh, yeah, well, what's this side? If, if, if you could see Bulbasaur and any other anime in a crossover, what do you think would be the best crossover anime for Bulbasaur to appear in? Can you repeat it? Oh. oh, no, it's okay. It's hard to hear with all that. Crazy. <laughs> If you could say Bulbasaur in another like fandom, what would you like to cross it over with? Oh, oh, that's so good. I mean, it would be fun to put Bulbasaur in Yu-Gi-Oh and have him duel instead of just no. Uh, oh, I can't. So he would, if you know, if Bulbasaur was saying help Big Brother, I guess like Sir, Sir, Baba, Baba, Sir. But that's not. But I would put him in that. It would be fun to put him in like My Little Pony. To see what happens, yeah. What would happen? It'd be crazy. Uh, the Smurfs, since they're all blue, I wonder if he'd blend in. It'd be kind of fun to see him show up in the Smurfs. Um, and I'd love to see the Smurfs come back. But I feel like he, you know what? He's pretty. He's pretty self self sufficient and self sure. So I think he could kind of show up in any world and be okay. I mean, look at him. He's sturdy. He's very sturdy. Yeah, next question. Uh, from all the characters you voiced, who is your favorite to voice and why? Favorite? You can't ask me that. That's so unfair. Um, well, I'll give you like a top bunch. So like from the old, the old days, I'd have to, you always have to go with number one. Bulbasaur, that's my first anime job. So you always have to go with Bulbasaur. From New cartoons, like from stuff that was not dubbed, it was anime. I love. There was a cartoon called the Generator Rex. You guys saw, you know, some. He knows that one. Uh, I played Cersei on that, and that was cool because I got to be in the booth with other actors like Mark Hamill. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Uh, Mark Hamill and John DiMaggio and Troy Baker, who's here somewhere, and just amazed. That was so. That was a whole different kind of experience. And then in recent part dubs, I, I really love playing Biscuit on Hunter x Hunter. Uh, just because she's, she's tough and I love her relationship with Gon and Kilua and that she's still a girly girl but can beat up anyone. So that's the recent one. But I can't pick one favorite. Good question. I can't believe I'm sat next to Chief now. I can't find you. I'm here. There you are. You're so cute. Yeah, guess who um, I'm sat next to. That seems dangerous, yeah. don't sit. I'm, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move to the next question, right. He is a lot like an Oompa Loompa. Does your face hurt from doing that? Yeah. Um, have you ever played any of the Pokemon games? And if so, which one was your favorite? I'm really bad at games, but I play Pokemon Go. I love Pokemon Go, yeah. But I don't battle. I only like to catch them and evolve them. I'm on Team Instinct. Where are my Team Instinct at? Yes. Just one, two, okay. Team Valor! No. Boo. 
Um, no, I love, I just, I like that, I like that it brings people together. I like that aspect of it a lot. I think they did the game in a great way. I think they just made it awesome, and I, I'm still playing. I know a lot of people gave it up, but uh, I still play. The other games, I was terrible at. I gave up very quickly on those, because I'm just bad. I'm not, that's not my, I'm more of a word game person. <laughs> Don't you have a Pokemon Go podcast as well? There is a Pokemon Go podcast. Yeah, I got to do that at, in a convention a few weeks ago. And the, it was so detailed about this Pokemon Go podcast, if you listen to it, it's fantastic. But it gets into details that I didn't even understand the questions that were being asked. And they're like, if you evolve this and you spin this and you say this word six times and spin around, I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I just want to catch the un they these unknowns that, that people were catching that were really fun. Okay, we have time for one more question. Can you dab? I've never done it. Do you want to go up and show her? Do you want to go up and show her? Round of applause. I can do the Macarena. <laughs> yes, let's do the Macarena. I want both a sort of dab. How many do you... I've never been asked that before. I can do the hand jive and the Macarena, but I never dabbed before. How do I do? Did she do good? Yes. I don't know. That's it. I think, yeah, that's it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, a massive round of applause, please, for the one, the only, Tara Sands. Thank you so much. Um, do you have a table before you go? Yeah. Where's your table? Where can people find oh, you? Oh, there's a whole autograph section, but it's hard to see me. I'm all the way against the wall. So if you don't see me, just keep walking. Keep walking next to Jess Harnell, who you definitely have to meet. So, and Taylor from Star Wars, there's a great little corner over there. Come hang out with us. Go and say hi. Thank Another round of applause. Thank you guys.